Hello everyone! In this video I show you example of the fluid mechanics sample test for fluid mechanics level 2 university students. There are some instructions how to do the test, how we can uh, type the number, what kind of format is accepted and we have questions. There are 12 questions as you can see. Uh, at this stage, status is shown as completed only for question number one. Question number one is the question where the students have to confirm that they have read and understood and will abide by the university rules on cheating and plagiarism, so they cannot copy. And by typing uh, their student ID number, they can um, save the answer to this question. There are zero marks. Then there are 11 um, questions we need to solve. So I have already solved all the questions and I will provide my answers, giving you some hints for each of these questions and uh, then I will press submit and see what I get. The maximum number of marks for this test is 50 marks out of 50. So the first question is, it's shown as question 2 but it's first Question where I have to provide my answer. Figure below shows three plates. Upper and bottom plates are fixed. And the middle plate uh, with uh, side uh, square plate. So both sides are equal. And the length of the side is 1388 millimeters. Is being moved with constant velocity V. The gaps between the plates are 2.2 centimeters on each side and uh, the gaps are filled with liquid and dynamic viscosity is 0.5 pascal multiplied by second assuming that the linear uh, assuming the linear velocity distribution be between the plates so between the moving plate and uh, bottom and upper plates which are fixed we need to determine the total force on the middle plate and provide an answer in newtons with two decimal points only. So we provide an answer in newtons, we don't need to write units. So my answer here, I have already solved, is 130.48. I said my answer. The hint here is we use Newton's law of viscosity and when we calculate the total shear stress, a shear force, it will be the total shear, uh, the shear stress multiplied by total area. And total area will be both sides of the plate, middle plate. This is the hint. So next question, next question. Consider three plates of equal <coughs> surface area, 695 centimeters square each. Upper and bottom plates are fixed and the middle plate is moving. What is the speed of movement of the middle plate if force is applied in equal 0.02 of Newton? And the gaps are filled <coughs> with water. We are given dynamic viscosity and the distance between gaps 2.6 centimeters. And we again assume linear uh, velocity distribution um, between the plates. Here we need to provide value of velocity in meters per second with two decimal points. So this problem is very similar to problem above. And only here we need to solve this for velocity by given force. And the answer is here, I already calculated, is 4.68 meters per second. The idea of this test, first of all, you can test yourself, but also you can check how when you solve yourself, if you get the same answer. So next question is question from hydrostatics. So we have the um, plate, which is inclined plate. Uh, and this is, um, there is some distance below the water, sea, water level, which is K, 3.3 meters. And we need to find the resultant force on the top surface of this plane A prime A B prime B and we are given K value we are given C value we are also given A value L value and also we are given width of the plane 
of this inclined plane. Again, I already solved this problem, and the pro uh, the answer is one four two eight sixty six. This would be in kilonewtons with two decimal points. So same answer. And the hint here is the total force which is applied to this surface is equal the pressure at the centroid of this plane uh, multiplied by surface area of this plane. And centroid is in the middle and distance from the surface to the centroid is vertical. The next question is <coughs> the tube is U-tube is used as a manometer to measure the pressure drop as uh, orifice plate. So <clears throat> delta P is equal P1 minus P2, where P1 is on the left-hand side, P2 on the right-hand side. The manometer differential reading is 10.28 centimeters. The fluid in the pipe is water, uh, density 1000 and the water and the density of the fluid within the manometer is 13,534. <coughs> we need to calculate the pressure difference. The pressure difference here <coughs> depends on the distance and also depends on the difference between densities of two different fluids. And the pressure difference should be provided uh, in meters of water head. So when you calculate pressure difference in meters of water head, you will need to multiply again by rho and g, density of water and gravity. Answer here is 1.29 meters in meters of water head. Next question is, we have a cube uh, the side of the cube is 332 millimeters and the cube of, is made of steel. It's submerged in water and the depth is 488 millimeters above the cube top. The density is 1000 kilogram meters cube and we need to calculate pressure force on the cube side. So not on the top, not on the bottom, on the side of the cube. And uh, my pressure um, my pressure force is 70717 newtons. So this is my answer, say the answer. And uh, the hint here is that the pressure on side of the cube would be equal, um, the pressure force would be equal pressure multiplied by surface area. And pressure is equal rho g h c, where h c is the distance from the surface level up to the centroid, and multiply by surface area. So I will just, just double check that I have saved all the answers. Yes, I did. So my next question is a cube of 359 millimeter side of steel. Density is given 7,800 is submerged in water. The density of water is uh, equal 1,000. We need to calculate force, which is in newtons, which is needed to hold the cube in place and provide your force in newtons with two decimal places. So my answer is 3,086. Four six. Four six. Same my answer. And the hint here is that you write your force balance, that your weight would be equal your force required to hold the cube in place plus buoyancy. So from this force balance you can find um, the force which is required to hold the cube in place. My next question is, water flows at a steady rate, 8.3 cubic meters per second, in a pipe, pipe, pipe of diameter 1.6 meters diameter, to pass an obstruction in the pipe, uh, to, pipe uh, to pass an obstruction, the pipe must be elevated over short distance, as shown in this figure. 
and the gauge pressure in the pipe immediately upstream of the uh, obstruction, which is 0.1, identify this as 0.1, 47.7 kilonewtons meter square, and the pressure in the pipe may be nowhere fall below atmospheric pressure. Neglecting frictional effects, calculate the maximum local elevation H permitted in the pipe. Uh, and calculate H in meters and show your answer with two decimal points. Again, I already calculated this and my answer is 4.86. And the hint here that you uh, write Bernoulli equation for point number one and for point number two. And the difference in elevation Z1 minus Z2 will be your H. The pressure at point 1 is given, and this is your, um, the pressure is given, 47.7, and this pressure at point 2 is unknown, so, but it says that pressure cannot fall below atmospheric, therefore the gauge pressure should not be lower than 0 at point 2, should be, should be 0 or positive. And velocity would be constant because flow rate is constant. 4.86 is my answer. So next question is, this is a difficult question. You can see it's 10 points. So in this question, we have a um, figure that shows um, a long bridge with two, two pairs. So this is your plain view looking from above, plain view plain view. And here it's your elevation. So looking from side. We have two piers and each pier is 1.8 meters wide. The distance in front, just immediately upstream of the bridge is between those centers of the, each pier uh, is L, which is 8 meters. The depth of water upstream of the bridge is 1.6 meters. And the depth of water between piers, 1.41 meters. And we need to calculate the mean flow velocity V2. So at this point, mean flow velocity under the arch. So in this cross section, assuming that the bed of the river is horizontal. So it's flat. And we also assume that the frictional effects of the riverbed and bridge piers are negligible. So hint here is, first of all, the flow rate is constant. Therefore, using continuity equation, we can express velocity at each point through continuity equation as Q divided by A1 and Q divided by A2 where A1 and A2 are cross-section areas. And because it's a river, cross-section area, for example, for point 1, would be the depth of water multiplied by length. You need to write Bernoulli equation again, and frictional effects are negligible. So from Bernoulli equation, you can determine flow rate. And when you know your flow rate, you can calculate velocity at point 2 as flow rate divided by cross-section area. So my answer here is 2.84 meters, uh, 2.64, sorry, 2.64, we save. Next question is, we need to click on one out of three points, so we have point one, point two, point three. We need to click on one of those three points where the velocity head value is the highest. So at point number one, velocity head is approximately zero because it's a big reservoir and velocity moves very slowly, so we can assume that velocity head is approximately zero. 
At point number two, cross section is quite wide, so the velocity head is the distance between piezometric head up to the total head line. And at point number three, because this is the smallest cross section, flow rate is constant, therefore velocity at point number three is equal flow rate, which is the same as at point two, divide by cross section area. Because cross section area is smaller, therefore velocity will be greater. So I click on point three, click save. Next question is, a flow is normally taken to be laminar if the Reynolds number is less than 2000. If the Reynolds number is more than 4000, it's turbulent. And if the Reynolds number is less than 2000, it's laminar. We say. And last question is where you have to answer. You, can, you need to calculate a few various parameters. And please note that special attention should be given in what units and with how many decimal places you need to provide your answer. For example, here, your answer is in millimeters with one decimal place, including zero. So, for example, if your answer is 25.0, you have to write 25.0. And question is, a commercial steel pipeline of diameter 145 millimeters is laid horizontally on a flat land. Laid horizontally means that elevation at the start of the pipe or upstream would be equal to elevation downstream because it's flat. It delivers water, density and dynamic viscosities viscosity are given, discharge at a flow rate of 160 cubic meters per hour, also given, darcy Weisbach friction factor can be taken as 0.0042, so we don't need to calculate this, uh, either calculate using Colebrook-White equation or um, use um, Moody chart, so we don't need to do it. And now we need to determine the following parameters for one meter length of this pipe. First of all, the head loss due to friction. Head loss due to friction. Answer my, my answer is 22.5 millimeters. Answer in 22.5 millimeters. I just used Darcy Wiesbach equation to calculate um, head loss due to friction. Then we need to calculate um, the pressure loss due to friction. So basically we need just to convert head loss due to friction into pressure. And this is done by just multiplying the head loss due to, pressure, uh, due to friction, multiplying by density and gravity. My answer is 220.7. Next one is we need to calculate the total shear force between the water and pipe wall. So the total shear force is calculated as we need to calculate shear stress. And for shear stress, we can use equation where shear stress uh, is can be calculated because we have a friction factor and also we know our pipe. Uh, because it's friction factor, we need the friction factor and also we need a velocity head to calculate shear stress. And then multiply by the surface area where this shear force acts and surface area would be your internal surface area of the pipe or surface area where water is in contact with pipe wall. And my answer is 3.64 Newton. Now, if the total length of the pipe is 4.5 kilometers and miscellaneous losses are 8 times the kinetic head, 8 times kinetic head, it's 8 multiplied by velocity head. And assuming a pump efficiency of 90 
percent, we need to determine the following. First of all, the head added to fluid by a pump in meters. To do this, we need to write Bernoulli equation, taking one point upstream, one point downstream, <coughs> where the pump is. And because uh, we have elevation, um, would be elevation is the same along the pipe, pipe is flat, uh, means that our total losses would be equal to the head added to fluid by a pump. So it's HF0 would be equal to HS. And total losses here would be your friction loss or head loss due to friction plus miscellaneous losses, which is 8 multiplied by kinetic head. And my answer here is 105.1 meters. And finally, we need to find the fluid power, which would be calculated using the head added to a fluid pump, to a fluid by a pump, which would be density multiplied by gravity multiplied by this head and multiplied by flow rate. And fluid power is to be provided in kilowatts with one decimal place. So 33.2, my answer. And finally, shaft power is required to deliver the flow. And again, also in kilowatts. And shaft power uh, for pump that would be required to deliver the flow would be your fluid power divided by efficiency, 90%. And this answer is 36 point nine. So I save this answer and now I'm ready to submit and see what is my uh, what is my mark, what is my grade. And my grade is 50 out of 50. So all answers are correct. So I hope you find it useful. If you need more detailed solutions for any of these questions, please Write your comments and I will make a movie for any of these comments to provide you solutions. Okay, goodbye.